Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I am giving you a tutorial on how to convert a PDF into a format where students can fill it in for assignments. But first I want to mention, if you have the chance or ability to, and it's not a lot of work, I would recommend just creating new templates in Google Docs because this is a bit more flexible for you long term to edit and adapt to yourself. It'll be less work if you ever have to change it. But if you have a heavily illustrated file, then this tutorial is for you so then you can just easily adapt it right away without having to recreate. So here you'll see I have a PDF I found online. It's just a back to school worksheet that's available for free. So it's non-editable, it's a PDF. So this isn't usable very well in an assignment. If you currently put this up as an assignment, each of the students will get it, but they can't actually edit it, fill it in or anything. They would have to print it off and then rescan it, which isn't a feasible option for many students. So to create it digitally, for modification, you either need to take a screenshot of it or convert it to an image. Now, if you're going to do a screenshot, you can either, on Windows, use the Snippin tool, which is going to be outdated soon, so I wouldn't recommend that. Or if you go to the notification panel, you can click Screen Snip there and it also will allow you to take a screenshot. Now keep in mind they're not going to give you the exact dimensions. It's not the best way so if you are going to convert a PDF I would recommend using an actual converter. The one I tend to use is called Cloud Convert. This is something I, that has been a go-to tool for me for quite a long time. They're very flexible. It allows you to pick a multiple file types and convert it to multiple other file types. Now I actually have a user but you don't need a user to use this. Um, I believe if you don't have a user you can do up to three or five conversions a day. If you have a free user you can do up to 25 a day so it's your choice if you want to create a user it has Google login integration but definitely just using the site as is works for the odd conversion. Now I'm going to go to convert and it has a from and a to right on the home page here so you need to go to the from pick your type so we're going to go to a document and find PDF and then we need to convert it to an image file preferably a PNG or a JPEG because those are the file standards so once you have it so it says PDF to JPEG you're gonna go select file and you're gonna find your PDF that you want to select and just hit open and now it's uploaded so now you're gonna hit convert and you also have the option to save output files to Google Drive if you have an account so that's an option if you had an account and then it'll save it instantly to Google Drive I'm just gonna convert it as is this is one of those times when it actually is easier for your file to be offline and it'll go through the conversion and then you'll get this download and you'll see it's back to school.jpg now so I'm just gonna hit download and it'll pop up down here so now I need you to go to a new tab and go to Google Drive I'm already loaded into it here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new Google slide the reason we're not using a Google Doc file is because Google Docs currently don't have the option for a background image and if you just put a floating image that's movable it's not the best as the um, base of a worksheet. So hopefully that's coming soon, but for the meantime we're going to use Google Slides. So I'm going to go create new slide. And you can close out themes, we don't need that. And what you're going to do is you're going to actually go create new slide and you're going to delete that original slide. And on the new slide I'm going to delete the title and I'm going to resize the text here to be smaller and move it to the corner for safekeeping. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the background button here and you're gonna click that and we want to add a background image because essentially we're gonna take that file and make it a background. Now you can click browse and find it it's probably in your downloads folder but if your downloads bar is still showing up on Google Chrome or if your downloads box is up in the corner on Firefox you can actually click and drag the file from that 
to the browser. If that doesn't work, of course, just hit Browse and find the file. And then we're just going to hit Done. Now, this looks weird because, obviously, the slideshow is not the size of a normal standard sheet of paper. So we're going to go File, Page Setup, click the widescreen button and switch it to Custom. And now we need to switch it to 8.5 by 11 inches. If you're going to do a portrait, it's going to be 8.5 by 11. If you're doing a landscape worksheet, do 11 by 8.5. So I'll do 8.5 and 11 and hit apply. And now all of a sudden it looks good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this text box here and move it down. This is going to be the basis for our students to input their answers. So what we're going to do quickly before we start copying it, I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change it. I think size 14 is going to be a better font to fit in the spaces. You could also bold it if you want. And you also want to check the text color and make sure it's on black so it's a bit more visible. So now that you've done that, you're going to resize this and drag it to the first box and try to fit it over top of the line just like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take it and copy and you need to do control C for copy, control V for paste if you want to use keyboard shortcuts. And then drag it to the next line and resize it. Now I'm going to skip ahead but you're going to do this for every single line just copy and paste to the next line until you have every line with a text box. Now I'm back, you can see that I have a text box in each of these lines. If you want to change the formatting for an individual text box, you can always change it. So for example, in this case, I might want the very first one to be centered, since it's in the middle of a sentence rather than the end. But otherwise, you're good to just leave that as is. Now when a student opens this file, they'll see all these text boxes, click to add text, and type. And I guess just to clarify, the reason I said to save that text box rather than to create a new one is if you try to just create all new text boxes, they don't actually give you the create, click to add text, which I think is a pretty important part of that. So by saving the default template text box, you can keep that click to add text line. Now, before you move on, we're going to go and add a name because that's important. So we're just going to call it the Back to School Worksheet. And then now it's ready to go. So we're going to go to Google Classroom to add the assignment and send it to the students. So now I'm on the Digital Classroom Tutorials Classroom page. We're going to go to Classwork and we're going to create an assignment. Now in here I'm going to say it's the back to school survey and in instructions I'm going to say please fill out the text box as with your answers and we'll make sure our grammar is right. Now you already have a file so we need to do add Google Drive and because this is the last thing you edited it should show up right here as back to school worksheet so we're gonna select it the most recent file there now you need to quickly go to the right corner here and you see where it says students can view the file you need to click that and change it so if it's view the file they can all view your file if it's edit the file they can all edit the same file which is yours but the bottom option, make a copy for each student, is Google's version of a photocopier. So if you select that, it's going to give each student an individual copy for themselves to edit and submit back to you. And then they can't see each other's answers and there's no conflict that way. I'm not going to fill out any of this stuff, but you can always add originality reports, points, due dates, whatnot. So I'm just going to hit assign. And once the assignment gets posted officially, which will be in a second here. You'll see Back to School Survey. It's an assignment on your classwork page. Sort it to whatever topic you have if you have topics. And if you click into this, you'll see, of course, the normal turned in and assigned comments. But if you click Assigned, and let's say I click on Tester Joe, you can see that Tester Joe now has a file that says tester joe dash back to school worksheet so this has made a copy for every student and stuck it as their name dash the document 
So now you could actually go in and view exactly what Tester Joe has done, if he's done anything. And you could do that for every single student. You can view their individual things, you can leave comments. But the point is, you now created a template from a PDF, and it's now an editable or fillable form for the students to do, and you've given each of them a copy. So I hope this has helped you out, giving you some tips. Again, I would recommend for j more standard, just basic word sheets, you should redesign those in Google Docs so that's an actual worksheet that way. But if you wanted to do the PDF or wanted to do more illustrations and make it fillable like this, this Google Sheets solution does work. So if you have questions or concerns or issues with this, and you need a hand, just reach out to me, either leave a comment or reach on to me on Twitter, at WebTheFox. Also, if you have a way to improve any of this, let me know in the comments, and if you have suggestions for a new video, let me know in the comments. So, thank you, and I hope this helps you. Happy teaching!